please welcome Alexa Forney to the stage. Hello. It's so good to be here. My name is Alexa Forney, and I am really excited to present With Despite Because Better Lives in Chronic Pain. So this is me when I was hospitalized with back pain last summer. I have had chronic lower back pain for the last five years, and at its worst, it was so bad that I couldn't walk. But I look kind of happy in this photo, don't I? Well, it's not the narcotics. It's actually because I know something that you might not. This is the narrative most people think of when they think of chronic pain. You're toodling along at a normal baseline level, minding your own business, and all of a sudden, life hits you with a brick. Right? Once you have chronic pain, your quality of life descends, and you finally bottom out, never to return to normal again. But this is actually the user journey that I have come to experience. Yes, life still hits you with a brick, and yes, your quality of life does descend, but then you hit this emotional inflection point, and your quality of life rises. Not only, in fact, do you just have it as good as before, life after chronic pain, for me, was actually better than it was before. And what's really interesting is that this isn't just my experience. As part of my qualitative user research, I hosted a chronic pain meetup with Song Lee from SVA's interaction department. And we hosted a meetup. We called it Nomo FOMO. It means no more fear of missing out and references the fact that the limitations that come with chronic pain and illness can be really socially isolating. We invited several young women with chronic conditions, framing Nomo FOMO as an accessible party with our icebreakers doubling as research questions. We took away a lot from this event, but most interestingly to me, every single one of our participants drew some variant of this chart. They all identified their lives as being better than they were before. And when I asked them, what makes your life better now, they mentioned a few reasons. I have healthier habits. I'm more aware of my body and myself. I am closer to my family. I am more grateful for the things that I do have. In short, they learned something that I also uncovered during my research on the intersection of happiness and chronic pain. We often mistake pain for being an exclusively physical phenomenon. You are a person in a physical pain state, and there's limited things that you can do about that. But really, pain is a biopsychosocial phenomenon. You, the physical aspect is augmented by several other lenses of the human experience, which can make a baseline pain either more tolerable or completely unmanageable. What this suggests is that we should not be focusing so much on pain management, but instead on life management. My thesis focuses on expanding the toolbox for people in pain to craft better lives. So today I will take you through a suite of design interventions that address several lenses of the pain experience. Let's begin with the social. So I mentioned the social challenges facing people in pain. Well, it's more important than whether you can make your friends parties or not. In fact, social isolation is as bad for the body as inactivity, and it exacerbates the perception of pain. When you're lonely, it hurts more. And people in chronic pain tend to turn to their loved ones for sympathy and emotional expression. However, the long-term nature of chronic pain means that even the best intended friends and relatives can run out of sympathy before you run out of pain. But what is that expression? That strangers are just friends you haven't met yet? Introducing Scribs. Scribs is a social gaming platform that unites the addictive interaction a hit of the hit game Draw Something with the benefits of a social network. There are two functionalities, posting a new game and playing the games that others have posted. When you post a game, you select the emotion you're feeling from a list, and then you have 30 seconds to sketch it. Other players then have the chance to guess how you're feeling, what you're trying to express, and if they get it right, you gain the opportunity to message each other. Scribs tracks your game history, your matches, and your favorite players, so you can return to the ones you like again and again. And over time, this kills two birds with one stone. It encourages creative self-expression and facilitates more resilient networks of mutual support between people in pain. But expressing how you feel to others is not always enough. 
No matter how socially engaged you are, chronic pain still comes with some emotions that are, at best, difficult to handle. Anger, guilt, fear, resentment, they're all part of the territory. Now, the good news is it may be impossible to control these feelings, but there is a way to influence how you deal with them. In fact, humans have been using rituals to deal with events beyond their control for millennia. And though rituals have fallen out of favor in contemporary Western society, they share marked similarities to the components of a successful placebo. The interesting thing about placebos is that while they cannot alleviate the problem underlying a chronic pain condition, they are remarkably good at affecting the emotional lens of chronic pain. So how could we introduce the power of ritual in a relevant way to a person in pain in contemporary America? Introducing Karmacy. Karmacy is a do-it-yourself workshop that makes the ritual framework digestible for a non-expert audience. I launched it as an event in two installments this past February and March. The experience design makes nods to its mystical origins by drawing from the typology of the labyrinth. Participants enter alone, are accompanied by a guide, and leave through the door through which they came. On the way, they move through five multisensory action stations, following along with a workbook that I developed to ensconce the six main elements of a successful personal ritual. After starting out with a little background on the goal of the workshop, they identify a personal goal, a personal pain point for themselves select, act out a vision around that goal, select a context, and props to help them evoke that vision. At the end, their guide helps them pull the components together in a short tea ceremony. And for the sixth step, repetition, they receive their custom blend of tea, the cup that they chose for their ritual, and their workbook to keep. But let's return to our initial area of concern, the physical. Did you know that stress makes you feel worse? Yes, yes, of course you did, but I don't just mean mentally. Chronic ongoing stress actually teaches your nerve endings to be more sensitive to pain and dulls the body's response to the pain medication that you might already depend on if you are a person with chronic pain. This is already pretty bad, but if you're one of the 20% of people in the workforce who go to work with chronic pain, it gets worse. Our culture has a pervasive narrative that in order to be successful, work has to be stressful. How can we turn the drive to win into a drive to maintain healthy behaviors? We turn performance tech on its head. This meant breaking out of the realm of the Fitbit and into an entirely new kind of form. I noticed that under stress, people tend to clench and unclench their hands, inspiring me to draw from the affordance of the stress ball and update it for a wearable market. Introducing Lessig. Lessig is a Bluetooth wearable paired with a smartphone application. The wearable component tracks self-reported moments of high stress by sending data to the phone when the user squeezes it. The app, in turn, utilizes the capabilities already inherent in your smartphones to take note of the rest, location, and activity levels. The combination of human input and passive data allows Lessig's machine learning engine to quickly pick up on times and places when the user is most likely to have a high stress episode. Let's look at two use case scenarios. This is Susan. You all know a Susan. She's really regretting staying at her job for another year, and now that the L line is closed, her commute just adds insult to injury. Her girlfriend gave her Lessig as an anniversary present, so she feels obligated to try it out. It doesn't take Lessig long to figure out that her stress and anxiety spike when she leaves the house in the morning, and within a few days, it begins to prompt her before she sets foot on the subway. Good morning, Susan. Would you like to join me in a breathing exercise? Even though we have already heard today that breathing is really good for you, Susan thinks if she takes another deep breath to calm down, she's going to scream. So she taps next. Lessig suggests a comedy sketch instead, and it learns her preference for the future. Here's someone with the opposite problem. Meet Dave. He loves his job. He can't even bring himself to, away from it when he leaves the office. But he's been having some back trouble since an overenthusiastic skiing trip last winter, and it tends to flare up when he puts in too many extra hours at home. Where Susan had a clear time and place for Lessig to step in, Dave needs a nudge when he stays sedentary for too long. Whenever he sits still for more than three hours, Lessig challenges him to take 50 steps away from his seat, and sometimes that turns into more. You'll notice that each persona received a different suggestion. Part of Lessig's business model includes partnering with other content providers in the pain and stress reduction space. Everyone has different needs and different ways of coping with their pain. Some need exercise, 
some need mindfulness, and some just need their sense of humor. And that's the essence of my thesis, with, despite, because. Every person in pain is different, every condition and every circumstance and every experience. These lenses of influence are diverse, and they deserve to be treated as what they are to practitioners everywhere, a challenge and an opportunity. It has been a privilege to spend a year of my life exploring this area of inquiry, and I have so many people to thank, but I would like to especially thank my family, Robert Eggman, Jeff, and Zoe Forney, and Robert and Thomas Forney for being so supportive throughout this process, even though they weren't entirely sure just what I was doing. Thank you so, so much. I remember seeing those charts when you brought them in, where people were better than, than they were to begin with. I was familiar with that term hormesis, where things grow back stronger, that if you break a bone, it will never break back, break that place again, or mm -hmm. uh, when, forest, when there are forest fires, the vegetation grows back stronger. Yes. That was an amazing discovery by you. I, well, it, I have to say it wasn't a discovery by me. The, um, the term for it in psychology is post-traumatic growth that they actually found that in studies of Vietnam veterans, for example, one in three actually came back from the war feeling stronger. And like even, even though it was a traumatic experience, they actually came back feeling like they were better parents, better community members for it. And I think that's, that's a very interesting concept, and it was really exciting to see that in the chronic pain space, which is often depicted as being so hopeless. Yeah, this is hopeful. Uh, what does Lassig mean? <laughs> Lessig, Lessig used to be my least favorite German word on the planet. All right, <laughs> let me tell you, when I was 16, I moved to Austria for a year. And Austria, Austria is like the Canada of Germany. <laughs> it's, it's very relaxed, everyone's going skiing all the time, they're drinking schnapps during the day. And, and I was a very tightly wound little person. And they, they would be like, oh, Alexa, I adore a bit classic. And it was just like, yeah, relax, calm down, live, just live life. I was like, no, not going to do that. But, but I, that's probably one of the biggest takeaways of having lived with chronic pain is like, yes, there is actually a time and place for Lessig. <laughs> so. Speaking of words, your name is Alexa. Mm -hmm. You did not do a voice-activated <laughs> intervention. <laughs> your question. Oh, well, <laughs> I considered it, actually. I, I am dead set on getting the Alexa developer t-shirt just for the puns. But um, I, I don't think it's there quite yet. What would it have been? Did you actually, jokes aside, give it some consideration? I did. I um, Well, there, 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 there are still limited things you can do with Alexa. I think in the next couple of years, it would be wonderful to make a conversational game that connects people through this device. I mean, we already have a connection between customer Alexa and the internet. It's just a matter of how do you add that next step to the interface? Yeah, that's nice. I had read that, um, you know, like you should know if there's a gun in the house uh, uh, that your kid is going to play at. Uh, you should know if there's an Alexa in the house that you're visiting. So the first thing you should do whenever you go anywhere is to say, Alexa, order two dozen buckets of Tide detergent. <laughs> and, and then people are like, no, 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 Alexa, cancel that, cancel that order. Um, and then you know that. You know, no one's ever asked me that. Yeah. <laughs> One last thing. Um, you're a wearable. Um, you're planning to Kickstarter it. I am. I am. I have had the support of a number of wonderful people throughout this process, and I, I would like to take it the next step. I think it could be really great. But it's relatively simple. It talks to your phone, Bluetooth with right. your phone. It just has the pressure sensor, so it knows when, and well, the phone knows where, when well, the phone knows when, too. So it just needs to send a signal for pressure and duration? Pressure and duration, right. Like a lot of them, there are a lot of wearables out there now, but a lot of them are in the $120, $240 range which is incredible. You really don't need that much technology. I mean, the, the, visceral, the visceral sensation of grasping onto an object is still important, but it's not $120 worth of important. Yeah. I like it. I keep it in the pocket, just be like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Alexa. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much.